Sometimes the tech world throws up little moments that reveal much bigger shifts. A cloud outage that exposes where the internet is still fragile. Secondly, a small AI tool that makes organizing your day feel effortless. And a long running debate about a blockchain's real usage and the developer rebuilding a project in minutes that once took days. Each story points to how fast things are changing across AI, Web3, and everyday tools. So let's get straight into it. When AWS and Cloudflare stumbled recently, a lot of the web flickered. Apps slowed down, dashboards froze, and some sites vanished altogether. For the most part, outages like these are accepted as part of the modern web. It's a reminder that behind every decentralized service somewhere sits a very centralized cloud. But this time, something interesting happened. Dom Williams pointed out that applications running fully on-chain through the internet computer didn't actually go down at all. Even while major pieces of Web2 infrastructure were struggling, the apps built directly on-chain kept running as if nothing had happened. That sparked a conversation under his post. Ayusa mentioned that during the Cloudflare disruption, some people still couldn't reach internet computer apps through their usual URLs. The apps themselves were fine, but the path to reach them, the DNS entry handled through Cloudflare, was the weak link. And because most people rely on clean URLs rather than canister IDs, access was patchy. Williams agreed that DNS as it stands is still a centralized chalk point. Even if the application layer is decentralized, the name resolution layer runs through the old system. And that old system has its own dependencies, its own vulnerabilities, and its own failure modes. He said the long-term goal is for the network nervous system, the internet computer's governing body, to run a full name resolution service on-chain. No external DNS, no Cloudflare, no AWS, no dependency on web foundations. He also mentioned an ambition to secure a dedicated ICP top-level domain. That would mean greater control over the namespace and a cleaner route for users to reach on-chain apps. There is no argument here between critics and defenders, just a recognition of the technical reality. The internet computer's compute layer didn't flinch, but access was still affected by the legacy remnants that sit between a user and the app they want to reach. Over the coming months, that's the area to watch, whether the internet computer can bring more of the web stack fully on-chain. Compute is only part of the story. If DNS stays centralized, the chain depends on the very infrastructure it seeks to transcend. For the project, this outage wasn't a failure, it was a case study, and for developers, it's a reminder that the idea of a fully autonomous web won't be reached until DNS itself breaks free of third-party dependence. From outages to organization, let's talk about something much more personal, that is, your schedule. A new personal web app called DayMate is trying to make calendars feel less like a form you have to fill out and more like a chat with someone who already understands what you mean. The idea is simple. Type something like, I have a meeting from 9 to 10. And that's it. The event appears in the calendar. No menus, no scrolling, no tapping through fields. Just natural language to structured output. They made gives people day, week, and month views, so it still feels familiar. But the creation process is where the friction disappears. The developer said the aim isn't to reinvent timekeeping, just to reduce the mental load that stops people from using planners consistently. If entering tasks feels like tedious admin, most people stop doing it. If it feels like sending a casual message, it might stick. And like many recent tools pushing out prototypes quickly, they made runs on the Caffeine platform. You will have seen the built with Caffeine tag being used more often lately. Caffeine has carved out a reputation among builders for letting people spin up working ideas without long development cycles, and they made fits that mold perfectly. Early reactions have been positive, but the question now is long with it. Will people actually trust AI to handle everyday reminders? Will the natural language parsing stay accurate under more complex entries? And will users prefer this conversation style over the precision of structured input? 
You can try it out yourself at the link given in the description below where the interface is intentionally simple. Type what you need to do and the system takes care of the details. That's the entire pitch. Remove the overhead, keep the usefulness. If the trend continues, we could be looking at a wave of micro tools built on Caffeine and similar platforms, each one focused, minimal and cleaner than the sprawling productivity apps many of us juggle. They made us just one example of how AI-assisted scheduling is being shaped for people who don't want to become experts in planning software. They just want their calendar to listen. Now, let's turn to a conversation that never quite goes away in the crypto space, that is the internet computer's activity, valuation, and real-world traction. The project raised roughly 167 million USD in its development years and launched with huge expectations. Even now, it's branding the internet computer, which carries an almost unavoidable promise. With a name like that, people expect high impact, high usage, high visibility. But critics have resurfaced concerns about the chain's actual activity. They argue that most of the transactions you see on dashboards aren't from people using apps, but from automated voting tied to SNS governance. According to that view, the chain looks busy, but the activity is internal rather than user-driven. Supporters push back by saying governance is baked into how the system is meant to work. High governance participation isn't an accident, it's part of the architecture. The internet computer is designed as a self-governing compute network, not solely a transaction-driven economy. Then there is the trivial question. At its peak, the internet reached about 6 million USD in total value locked across DeFi, mostly via ICP swap. That's small compared with other major ecosystems. Supporters say TVL is a narrow lens because the internet computer isn't built around the traditional EVM-style DeFi ecosystem. Critics say the number still speaks to a broader challenge. The chain struggles to pull users in and keep them. Another point that never fades is the fully diluted valuation. When ICP first listed, the debut candle implied a valuation north of $1 trillion. The timing, that is mid-2021, was brutal. Many retail buyers entered at the worst moment, and the drawdown that followed left deep scars. The result is a community where a large portion of holders are sitting on heavy losses, which shape sentiment long after the price action itself. The result is a community where a large portion of holders are sitting on heavy losses, which shape sentiment long after the price action itself. Yet, the token still trades at a multi-billion dollar market cap. Critics claim the strength of the name itself, the internet computer branding, adds weight that doesn't match adoption metrics. Supporters argue the project remains focused on long-term structural goals like the governance model, the compute layer, chain key cryptography, decentralized cloud concepts, and developer frameworks. So, where does it leave things now? The next phase depends on whether the project can escape the perception of being stuck in internal loops. If the applications built on-chain start reaching more users, and if tools like Caffeine, OpenChat, Hot or Not, and others begin pulling in broader audiences, the usage argument shifts naturally. If not, the debate will continue. Because the chain is unique in its architecture, but uniqueness alone isn't enough. It has to translate into experiences people want to use, not just governance dashboards. The internet computer is still one of the boldest experiments in the ecosystem. The question is whether that ambition can be matched by visible, real-world traction over the coming years. Let's wrap with something that struck a chord across developer circles this week, a before and after moment that says a lot about how fast AI-assisted development is moving. Independent developer Amspeed revisited a project he built roughly six years ago, a simple NASA photo of the day website. Back then, it took him around two days of solid work. He had to learn React hooks, manage state, handle API calls manually, and assemble every moving piece of the interface. It was a normal workflow for the time, and honestly, still a normal workflow for many projects. This week, he recreated the entire project through Caffeine AI using one prompt. Not one prompt plus tweaks, not one prompt plus fixes, just one prompt. 
Kiffin generated the full build in under five minutes. He didn't input URLs. He didn't set up API logic. He didn't wire components manually. The tool understood his intent and produced a working version, hosted and ready to share. Developers saw this and had a mixed but healthy reaction. Some loved it. To them, it means beginners can get started without a steep learning curve, and experienced builders can skip the boilerplate and focus on product design and custom logic. Others were cautious. When AI abstracts everything, developers lose visibility into the decisions the tool is making. And when an app needs long-term maintenance, depth matters, not just the initial generation. There is also the big question of security. If AI builds the internals, who guarantees that it stays safe? These discussions are good. They are not anti-AI and not blindly pro-AI. They are thoughtful responses to the shift happening in real time. But the practical takeaway from Amspeed's experiment is undeniable. Something that took two days now takes minutes. Tutorials, trial and error, and large chunks of code have been reduced to a single instruction. For small apps, this could become the norm. For larger ones, the real judgment will come down to whether tools like Caffeine can handle complex logic, integrations, scaling, and updates without developers needing to rewire everything manually. Either way, the speed alone explains why more developers are paying attention to Caffeine. It's not just prototyping, it's edging toward production level output. And when you compare the old workflow with the new one, it becomes obvious why this field is moving so quickly. The baseline has changed, the expectations have changed, and the time between idea and execution is shrinking dramatically. If you're watching the shifts in Web3, AI tooling, developer workflows, or decentralized infrastructure, Today's updates offered a snapshot of how fast things are changing. Outages revealing structural weaknesses, micro tools rethinking everyday tasks, debates resurfacing around old ambitions, and AI building in minutes what once took days. This is Ledger Life, and if you would like to support our channel, donation details are in the description. Thanks for watching.